I'm John, Shopkeep Arty. Welcome. Today, it's a pleasure to host uh, Janine Galizia uh, from France, live from France. She's not French, though. She's from Australia originally, and we'll be saying hello to her very shortly. I've got a, a reference painting in the back here, and you will have received something fairly similar to that. Um, but uh, Janine is keeping you on your toes, and she submitted another one as well this morning. So maybe I should change the the uh, image behind me to this one instead so that it's I don't know it's uh, A or B um, something to do with Venice as well anyway let's say hello to Janine hi Janine how are you that's wonderful how are you yeah very very well so it's the first time that we've hosted you um, but you you've got an amazing history maybe just for those that are new to you maybe just uh, introduce yourself and what you've what you've done oh Super quickly, because as you can see, we've got two subjects behind you. So um, I'm Australian. I live in Europe. Um, I've been painting since forever. Um, and I'm obviously a professional artist, um, uh, an international judge. Um, I'm a co-creator of the Art of Watercolour magazine. I've curated many exhibitions. Um, and I like to get um, people moving and shaking, which is why there's two subjects. And I guess the bottom line of everything um, is I get a bit frustrated, particularly as a judge, because I see a lot of paintings where a lot of people seem to have little things that are going wrong in their paintings and they leave them there, which means they're not seeing them. And these things are really easy to correct, but they're also really easy um, to avoid. Um, and if you like, there's such an easy way to learn how to paint and we're not using it. So all of these things I see um, basically have fine-tune my teaching, which I've been doing for 25 years or so, um, to really try and get people to progress really fast in a very simple way. And it's really cool. So, yeah, that was in a nutshell. Okay, okay. Well, that, that's fantastic. Well, I can tell that you're going to be an incredibly lively <laughs> host. So thank you. Uh, no pressure. Uh, what I'll do is I'll put it on your overhead, maybe. And hopefully everybody's got the reference photos and everything that was sent out yesterday. And um, we can make a start. All right. So what I've got, I've got two subjects for a good reason. Okay, we're not going to be doing complete paintings of two. So great. what we're going to be doing is I'm going to try and teach you how to easily add atmosphere to, to a subject. And as you can see, regardless of the subject. So we're going to start with the easiest one, um, which is this boat scene that's probably on your screen. Um, it's a very misty scene. Now, atmosphere is um, a little bit complicated in the sense that it doesn't have edges. It's not an object. So we're trying to paint subjects and sort of overlay an atmosphere an atmosphere into the subject so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to very quickly um throw this subject on my sheets and as this is a demonstration um my goal is but honestly, to teach more than it is to come up with something absolutely fantastic, I want you to come back from this workshop or this um, demonstration um, with basically tools that um, allow you to actually do stuff and improve your painting straight away. So simple. We're going super simple, okay? Mirror image reflection. And let's just throw in a horizon line. I'm going to put it a little bit higher than it is in the image. Um, then there's another boat. And look at this boat. It's basically pretty much a rectangle. And that's pretty much all we need. So that's going to frustrate a lot of you that have been drawing this subject out for 10 minutes, half an hour. But the idea is to get an atmosphere. If you overdevelop your drawing, you will over-detail your painting. They go together. The, the more simple your drawing, the more simple and spontaneous your strokes will be. Now, there is a tree line here. I'm not going to draw it in. I'm using a pen, which I don't normally use, um, which I don't use at all in my paintings. Um, it's just that um, one of my wonderful students who um, I think is here today, so shout out to Simonetta, um, suggested that I use it because it's easier for you to see. 
Um, so there you go. What I'm going to do is this painting requires layers. Watercolor is transparent. We do have a paint paint. It is largely transparent though. So the idea is to build up tone of values in order to create uh, atmosphere, shape, whatever we want. So I'm going to put this really simply on, uh, there you go, there's another hair lost, on my sheet. And I'm not wetting my sheet first, otherwise we'll be here until Christmas for it to dry. So this is going on. And I like the light. There's a, it's almost like a, a misty white about this height. The sky is a little bit darker above and the tree line is darker below. So I put the paint up the top. Now I'm just running it down with water and there it will progressively get lighter. So that was not very complicated. You want to basically put it on as simply as you can. You don't want to go over um, your shapes if you can avoid it. Now, this is done. It's a done deal. This will slowly run down. Why? Because my painting, my sheet is on an angle of about this, about 30, 30 degrees. By having my, um, my sheet on an angle, as you can see, the water runs down, but that allows me to actually control where the water flows. So here I'm going around the boat, and as I left my um, sheet dry, I can have soft edges and hard edges wherever I want them to be. Now, I just sort of threw anything on as a colour um, because colour really doesn't have much of an incidence at the moment. You're going to see why at the end. We're actually going to put a, um, another wash on at the end. So we're going to, going to go a little bit darker than what we would imagine. And don't be shy of adding little white lines, strokes, little um, irregular lines. Don't be perfect. You know, I say it a thousand times per painting. Um, perfect is boring, okay? If you want atmosphere, you don't want something static and um, stiff. This shape I think I will leave. Um, let's get this in. I'm literally just painting where the shadows are and I'm making most of them up. But that doesn't matter. No one's going to know. You see how this actually already works? What I'm doing is I'm connecting. I've gone from the value up here. I've pulled it down so it's created a soft edge all on its own. And now I'm quite literally pulling that shadow into every single little shape. And it's all giant, one giant connected subject. All right? And that's where all these little whites are so important. If I didn't keep them, then everything would have just been um, washed out. So should or should I not go over these boats? I think I will, particularly this one, because this is not as this boat is not so visually important. I don't want it to jump out as much as this one. So I'll go over the boat and maybe just leave some white hanging around here down the bottom. And this all of this is just being done with my ultramarine blue. It's Windsor and Newton ultramarine and it's the green shade because I don't want granulation. The French ultramarine granulates, the green shade doesn't, and it's exactly the same colour. Um, all right, so I think I'm going to have a different colour on the boat. I'm going to go for more of a burnt sienna. Let's just go pure burnt sienna. And again, that's Windsor and Newton, so it's nice and transparent. Not all burnt siennas are transparent, and some of them even granulate. I'm going to do the other one as well. All right, that's just reminding. It's a little reminder of that sort of yellow. This yellow, which I was using, is yellow ochre, again, from Windsor and Newton. All right. Now I'm going to do the opposite to what I did before. I've, I've painted the colour, washed the brush, take out the majority of the water, and so I just basically slide the water out of my brush. I'll probably split it too much. One or two times is enough. And then I'm just going to let the water bring the drop down and then add water. And now I'm going to pick up that colour again, ultramarine, um, yellow oak, uh, not yellow ochre, 
um, gold, okay? And then I bring that colour back in, but I'm keeping that white. Now the atmosphere is already there, huh? so that was pretty easy. Now you know how we're going to do two paintings in, in no time at all. I want a little bit more detail. I'm going to want maybe this, this colour to come up a little bit closer to the boat. This is such an easy way of doing it. Um, sometimes I really don't know why we complicate things so much um, because, honestly, anybody can do this. As long as you can get your washers um, running, which is why I suggest that people do put their, their sheet on an angle um, because it allows you to do this. If your sheet is flat, water will fuse outwards in every single direction, and so you're not going to get this graded wash as well. All right, so that's working okay. Take off this water, and then all we need to do basically is go back in and add some details, add a, add some um, some details and some uh, darker shadows, and and that'll be enough. I want this to dry because I do want to put another layer over at least part of the painting. So I'm not touching here. I'm definitely not going to paint the masks because they're going to fuse. This is still wet. So I'm going to paint where. I want fused edges. I'm going to make the most of this wash still being wet. And so I'm going back in the same wash, um, ultramarine, gold ochre, perhaps even a little bit of violet or green. It doesn't matter. I'm making a dark colour, a darker value. Basically, anything goes is about right. And now I'm going a bit darker around just the bottom of the trees. That's probably too dark, to be honest. But we can just put and make it a little bit browner as well. You never need to worry about, um, um, I won't say making mistakes, I don't really like that, but a lot of people get a little bit too concerned about going back into watches, fixing them up, playing with them. Um, as long as the, the water level is okay, like you don't drown. Like if you see I don't have a watermark, yet I went back in because my brush is always drier than my paper. As long as my brush is drier than my paper as my paper is moist, I can do what I want. When the paper's dry, I can paint dry or, or, or wet, and, and honestly that, that won't make any difference either. So that's just a little bit of darker value just to sit, to make that background sit, all right? It just sits, makes the whole thing sit. I do like the idea, I love white, here we go, of using a blue. That's my ultramarine with loads of white because I like white. And, yes, you are allowed to use white. And I'm going to very gently... Put it over my boat. And you can say why if you are painting uh, with loads of water, are you wanting that blue to be full of white? And that's very simply because, one, this is gouache. It's white gouache. It's heavy and it makes the, black, the blue stay where I want it to be. Secondly, the blue, now that it's got the white in it, acts as something that is more opaque, although it looks transparent. You, it won't mix with my yellow. It's going to keep a bright blue on my yellow background. So now I have yellow peeking through, yet my blue is blue. And you can't do that when you don't have white. So that's just uh, one advantage of the white. I think I will add some white here as well. It's always got a little bit of blue in it, just to sort of keep some sort of foggy, misty something going on. Because we're after atmosphere. All right. As this dries, this is drying and this is drying, I'm going to start putting in a little bit more detail into the boats. I don't really need a lot. I, just, I need just enough, enough for you to understand their boats for the very simple reason that I'm trying to put the atmosphere forward um, rather than do a painting of boats. So if I don't want to do a painting of boats, I need to suggest the boats and let the atmosphere appear to be more 
um, more interesting. It's dominating the painting. And I'm not going to put in every single window, every single bar. This demonstration is really to get you, um, for those of you that want to, um, thinking about focusing on the atmosphere of a subject rather than just the shape of the subject. The atmosphere is what attracts us. The light is what attracts us. After that, we'll figure it. We'll figure it out that it's a boat. We'll figure it out. The rest of it, we'll figure out. So let's put a little bit of a darker line down here. Again, my brush is drier than my paper. So the colour stays where I want it. Don't be scared to put your fingers in it. That way your DNA is even in your paintings and no one can say they're not yours. Um, let's put a little bit of that blue in this one as well. This is beginning to get dry enough, I think. Yeah. So I could actually run a shadow down. Can't go too far. I know this bit's still a little bit wet. Let's go a little bit turquoisey. So burnt sienna. This is burnt sienna and this is burnt sienna, okay? They're exactly the same. I have a one burnt sienna area here to mix with my yellow and my pink, and then I have the same burnt sienna on this side, usually to mix with my purple and my blue, and that way that sort of stays bluish and gets dirty but I don't put the blue all the way over here because that's going to mess up my yellow. Um, so if I say burnt sienna and you see me coming here or here, it's exactly the same thing. Um, what was I doing? No idea. All right, let's say turquoise. That's what I was saying. In here, difficult to see, is my Windsor blue. That's my Windsor blue green shade. It's really transparent. I've put a little bit of burnt sienna here, so it's a little bit turquoise already. And I want to make it super transparent. All right. I'm not going to go down too far because um, otherwise it's not going to dry. I want this to dry because I'm going to come back into it. But I'm just doing all the little bits that I can. A little bit of movement going on in the water. Maybe connect them. All right. So this brush that I keep using is actually an English brush. You guys have got an advantage. It's um, SAA. I'm never. I'm not sponsored by anybody. I. I this is my brush. Um, I'm not. I'm not into publicity for things I don't use. It's a brilliant brush. Um, it really is a brilliant brush. So this is the one I use the most. Plus my um synthetics which are a Skoda, and I always want to have a synthetic um, point because they're more nervous and the hairs flip back into place. This is dry enough. Yep. So a little bit too dark. We're going to go a little bit too dark. Um, or are we not? Let's have a look. Checking the time. No, I think the time is fine. Janine, just on the, when you were doing the ripples of the water, were, was the yeah. paper quite wet there as you were applying the paint? No. no, this is dry. Okay, okay. That's why you can see the hard edges. Yes, okay. You can see here, here it fused a little bit because this part is still a little bit wet. Yeah. All right. Honestly, if you guys were not here, I would turn my painting around and I would paint. I'll do it, but I won't keep it like that. So if you if you've got sea, if you get seasickness, close your eyes for a second because I'm going to make the painting pivot. When you want to do masts or posts, try and do them either upside down, starting at the the base and up, or if you like me and you can't do a straight line. Go sideways, but always start at the base because when you do a line, I'll do one and you'll see. This one needs to be quite strong. There is always more paint that comes out at the beginning of the line than at the end of the line. And you always want the base to be stronger than the top. So if you start at the top and you go down, but all of your strokes will be stronger up here, 
creating more contrast. Therefore, everyone's going to be looking at this part of the painting instead of this part. So just look at that. Paint, no paint. Uh, that was, you know, that's what I wanted, but it was a good example. Okay, so always start at the base of your subject. I'll do the rest of them this way, but trust me, they're going to be really wonky. All right. So uh, Nicola, Nicola said, uh, hi, Janine, this is really interesting. What paper are you using? Ah, that's a good point. It's Archer's 300 grams fine grain. Okay, thank you. Okay, keep it loose. If you're wanting atmosphere, like I said, don't go half hyper detail. Um, and don't leave leave things not finished. Um, don't say, and I have to go up. That's why I, I can't do it. So I'll just take it off that way. I can't go down. No, I always do the messy. Um, the more detail you put in, the less the person has to imagine. And when the people don't, when the people imagine, when the public imagines, when they look at your paintings and they imagine, basically what happens is they um, feel the imagination stops the brain working. And they try to understand it. It's, it's sort of like a, um, a survival instinct, if you like, that we start looking, we start feeling, we start trying to understand what's going on. When everything is really detailed, that's a boat, that's a mask, that's a wave, I no longer need to imagine. Imagination brings emotion, um, dream, uh, all of those sort of feelings, um, and that's what we want. If you're painting an atmosphere, if you're not painting atmosphere, um, you don't need it. but So you see, this basically is very easy in the sense that all I'm doing is creating that big scene from the very beginning, which is where my atmosphere comes from. And honestly, I can make a mess of the details if I wanted to, and the painting should still work as long as this big shape is interesting, nice, and... Um, um, offers something that allows people to imagine. I'm putting in a few more. There could be boats in the background. And then we're going to put some darker little nothing shapes because they let people imagine. I'm making, I'm stimulating, hopefully, people's eye to imagine what they're seeing. Okay, so a few little strokes. Let's get a wash down here and then we'll do something else. But you see, that's not a big effort. Huh? Um, I'm doing it pretty quickly just because I want you to grasp the um, the principle more than anything else. I mean, we could take our time and do it. And usually when we take our time, people overwork the subjects, which is why I'm, I'm pushing you a little bit on the speed side because it forces people to not be perfect. If I give you hours to paint something, most people will actually paint the subject using all of the hours that they're given um, rather than um, just painting the essentials. So I'm speeding you up voluntarily. <laughs> just a little thing, as you're putting the darker values on the painting, do you do you squint your eyes a little bit sometimes to sort of look at how it's counterbalancing with the lighter values? No, I don't. I, I guess because I know my paint pretty well. Right. I okay. can see pretty much, but it's a good way of doing it. Um, I don't, but that doesn't mean it's um, it's not worth doing. Okay, loads of little nothings, and that will help to animate And I'm going to put something here which pretty much resembles this colour and value. So if I go back to my first wash, that was the ultramarine and uh, gold ochre. I'll make it maybe a little bit bluer. I'm going to put a, a, a wet wash, not like this, a wet wash. I probably can put some white in it. Hey, why don't we go? let's put some white in it. There's no fun without the white. All right, and let's just... Put that on. Don't play with it. Just put it on. You don't need to overwork a stroke. Put the stroke on, go to the next one. And I started quite low 
I think I need another one. Right, there we go. This brush is good for everything except the dry line. It's It just doesn't do dry lines. It does in the middle, but not on the edge. So I'll soften it. And you see, just basically by having that little bit of white, that contrast, which is happening, all of a sudden I'm drawing the eye in um, to my subject. I'll soften the edge. And I'll just put some darker values in and that'll be it. So it's a very easy way um, of, it's a bit dark, of creating tone, of uh, creating atmosphere. I'm not interested in the subject as much as the atmosphere. So the subjects are subtle, suggested. And let's put some posts in and then that'll be enough. Okay. So you can put as many details in as you want. You can go back in and do, you know, bring it out um, into um, something a little bit more defined as much as you want. Huh? But I think that's enough for it. So. That's amazing, Janine. I can't believe how you've brought it together in such a quick amount of time. Yeah, but what color should be passed? We play too much with them. Honestly, she says that she's going back into it and playing with it. So <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Is that what they say? Yes. Yeah. But the less we play with it, usually the better it is. But that's called compromises. And sometimes we forget that we have to make compromises. So I don't know if anyone's got any questions about this one. Otherwise, I'll move on to something else. Pretty much to show you how we can work um, atmosphere. This, I'm giving you the same technique. Huh? I'm not saying that atmosphere can only be done this way, but I'm giving you one technique. That is to put a, a wash on from the very beginning. And this wash is actually going to be the thing that's going to help create the atmosphere. It's going to be a repetition of the same colours. It's going to be a lot of soft edges and just giving enough detail so that we know what we're looking at without um, being able to read uh, who made the boat, what date it was built in, um, and all those details. Okay, so we're going for just enough information and not too much. Um, and then from there, honestly, you can play. Um, don't overwork the, the, the subject, but play with it a little bit, which is where we can take off colour, we can add colour, we can do all sorts of things to it. to even create a little bit more um, light in there. So that's just water that I'm putting on. I'm not leaving that wet water. I know that sounds silly. I'm now going to dry it, and that way I won't get a watermark. And that way I've just got a little bit of light poking through. I think that's even nicer. So there you go. First one done. Brilliant. Good job at the office. No, that <laughs> that's brilliant. And what an amazing – I'll tell you, what's, what's so – fascinating to watch these great artists paint is when they're, they're using they're using your imagination so that the lines as janine was saying as she was painting it she's doing things not in crisp detail but just doing uh, almost uh, uh, accents of something that your mind fills in the detail and it makes it's, it's, it truly amazes me it's, it's an amazing skill to have maybe you have it i certainly don't i'm still working on that one but janine did a brilliant job there so thank you so much janine that was brilliant so janine the next one and a few people have in fact just during that one a benoit said nice work janine um and hazel made a comment and said john and you thought randy was quick we i sometimes host an artist called randy hale and he's very quick and uh yes you may have got the medal for the quickest artist here janine thank you um oh. <laughs> I'll, I'll send it to you in the post um so uh so this next one is of venice and uh saint mark's square and the photo reference has got loads of rain. It's obviously just rained in the morning or something. And so you've got all the reflections in the square, but you've got a lot of detail going on. And I, we've got half an hour. I can't imagine that you'd be able to, to do this in half an hour, Janine, but I, I know you're probably going to prove me wrong. Me neither. <laughs> Why not try? 
I started too big. I just turned my sheet around. Okay. Try. What have we got to lose? But what I'm looking for is the atmosphere. So, and I'm going to do this so fast. Okay. So if we thought the other one was fast, this one's going to be faster. <laughs> um, I would suggest to anyone, John, is this recorded? Do people actually get yes. the recording? Yes, it is. It is being okay. recorded, and it will be put on YouTube at some point. So, um, just for those Ooh. watching, if you want so to, I have to be careful what I say. Oh yeah, yeah. I can I can edit any swear words out or you know, <laughs> don't worry. Um so just to, to let people know if you want to get the link to this, if you sign up to our newsletter, it's on Shopkeep Arty, um, then you'll get sent an email when once this live on YouTube. Cool. Okay. So um as you can see, all I'm interested in, because again, I this is Principle. I want to show you the principle, not necessarily create an exact replica of some of um, Palais des Doge um, in Venice. So all I'm after is basically enough shape that you can actually see what it is. Now, this one is a little bit off center. If I build in the painting, people are going to think it's weird um, that this doorway is not in line with this. So I'm going to move it. Don't tell anyone. At least. Okay, I'm putting it there. Um, because if you put it off center, it's going to look weird. Um, and so, you know, that's just fine. I'm not looking at all where these are. I'm going for very simple. I'm not going to put the tower in. I just want loads of people. So let's get these um, domes in, these arches in. What I would suggest to the people that are here um, doing this with me, um, paint later, all right? It's very hard to paint, watch, and listen at the same time. So I would say, I would say if you've done the first one, take a breather um, and let's just watch this one. I'll go faster. Um, I'm not going faster because we have a, um, a time problem. I'm going faster because I actually want um, this effect to be the way I want it to be. That's a mirror image. So I will speed this up, all right, and then you can do it again on the on the um, on the replay. All um, right. So, Jimmy, do you recommend that sometimes if people were to try and deliberately speed up their painting, it would help them to get looser in their style? Completely. It will also help them get some grey hairs and a little bit of frustration, <laughs> and that's a good thing. Not necessarily the grey hairs. The frustration is a good thing. It means you're changing your habits. When you're painting habits, um, I'm not going to paint a, a sky here. When you are using your habits, um, you're painting what you've already always painted in a way that you've already painted it probably a thousand times and therefore you're not progressing. So if you want to progress, you have to get uncomfortable and do things that you don't normally do, which gets uncomfortable. It can cause frustration, but if you're getting frustrated, it means you're going out of your comfort zone. Good thing, okay? So I'm doing exactly what I did in the other one, but I'm doing this in a different subject, obviously. I'm not doing a sky. I'm not doing that big wash, quite simply because it's not going to dry fast enough. Otherwise, I could. But that one wash is coming over here as well. And imagine that my light comes from the right I don't know where it comes from because there's not a lot of light there, but I'm putting my shadow on my left side. So if you can, watch rather than paint, just to get the idea, okay? Here is buildings. I'm not really interested too much in them. They kind of go like that, like that, and that'll do. As we say in Australia, Bob's your uncle. Never had an uncle Bob, but he could be someone's. All right, so... That's my building here, and I'm connecting all of this yellow stuff. I might put that little parasol in. This is all in the shade. I'm linking all of this together, exactly like what I did in the first one, okay? It's just a different way of doing it. Let's put a shadow over here. I don't know what it's a shadow of, but that's okay. Okay, it's that same idea. Take a wash, connect everything. This is actually building what I call the structure, which some of you already know. That's darker. 
All right. And what's on the other side? More buildings. Okay, so let's just put that in. And then I'm not going to close that because otherwise I'm going to end up with pretty much the same thing. So well, let's go not so yellow. Let's just leave it open. Uh, just okay. a comment from Sam. Sam said that drawing would take me hours. And it, it can be quicker, but as as Janine said, I think just practicing it, trying to get yourself looser, even with not just with your painting, but also with your sketching. Um, the other thing as well, Janine, I wanted to ask with connecting shadow, because I think that is a, such an important thing that people. Why is that important on a painting? Because it ties everything together. Otherwise, that's how we get those floating shapes. Because things are not connected. Um, by actually connecting it, whether it be first what I call the structure, which is one big giant shape, I'm actually connecting every single shape, or you can do the same thing at the end. I prefer to do it in the beginning because then you control where where your um, where you're connecting shapes. If you're just connecting things at the end, honestly, it doesn't work as well. But look at this: my building, my street, the foreground. And the building on the left, I'm not doing this side. Everything is one giant shape. And so all I need to do is go back in and put the values on and a few details and, um, and it'll be done. This is obviously a very loose um, version of, of the, the subject because I'm just trying to get this idea of structure across and um, atmosphere to stop because we're always focusing too much on detail. Too much detail, too much technique. There's no atmosphere in technique and overworked details. Huh? That's exactly where we lose a painting. And so I'm focusing on basically now the shadows. Where are my shadows? I'm putting a mid value in now. I'll come back after and put a dark value in. That's where these doors are. This is, you can see how, how, um, detailed on being like which is not at all now i'm going to go a bit darker maybe i can change my brush for this now uh, again, some some artists if they're doing a landscape or something Ginny, they'll work sort of top of page down uh, but i i can sense that the way you're doing it is layering the value scale so you're starting with the starting with the shadows initially but then starting from the lighter to the darker values is that is that how you tend to work it, it is, but it is also top down. Okay, okay. Okay, so this darker value now is here. It's here. It's here. It's here. And I'm not worrying about it being perfect. I want it to fuse out. I want it to be um, quite loose. Because I also want this to dry. So um, I, I want to do this quite quickly. Um Let's throw in a little bit of um, pretend detail, not so purple perhaps. So they can be towers. Let's put some, I, they, they are towers there. I'm not even going to bother looking at them, but there are loads of little towery subjects. And if I get the actual big shape of this subject is, someone may come up to you, to me and say, oh, I know there. That's the Palais des Doges in, in Venice. Just because the silhouette works, you don't need to have all the details. You can have some. I'm not saying you don't have to put them in. But try and make the big shape work first because when the big shape works, you're going to see that you actually get atmosphere as well. And don't forget that when you're painting a subject, particularly something like this, the subject's far away. I could not possibly paint every brick because I couldn't see it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put those dark values that I had in the reflection. This is actually still wet. So I want this to fuse and it will. So, and I want it to fuse in a quite a loose way. If I was doing this as a painting, I wouldn't be painting it so fast. I reassure you this is, um, I would be giving it a little bit more attention. I just want to show you methods to get easy atmosphere. In one hour, we can't do everything, but 
It's something that I know that a lot of people want. They want to be able to create more atmosphere in their paintings. So that was my idea. If we focus just on the atmosphere, but we just might get it. Now, okay. a question from a, a question from Benoit: Are values more important in your atmospheric play compared to colors? Yeah. And yes, they are. I think you'll find Benoit that, like, and I'm sure you've done these. Sometimes you can use totally unrealistic colors of subjects um, to make it just very different in style, but you you can really identify with it, and that's because of the values coming through. I think it's probably the most important, one of the most important things in a in a painting. It doesn't really matter what colour you paint it. <laughs> correct. I, I, th I think so too. I think if you did the same painting with greens, it will it could work. If you do it with purples, it could work. It's not that that changes it. However, um, colour is like um, makeup or like decorations on a Christmas tree. Um, the tree on its own, even though it could be an interesting tree, look great and all the rest of it, um, needs a little bit of colour to give it just a little bit or makeup, whatever you want to call it, just to give it a bit of light. Um, so colour has such a big importance on um, an emotional level mm. um, and also to attract the eye, which is what I'm doing. I'm, I'm putting in little blobs of, well, these are people. Um, they may not have heads or legs, but they're, they're the beginning of my people. Um, and that's what colour is really good for. However, if I try to paint the atmosphere in this scene and go really heavy on bright colour, I'll probably lose it because the, the lights, shadows, um, mist, fog, smoke, atmosphere comes from tonal values. So they have to be um, the ones that we see the most. So... I'm now going to let this dry. As this dries, I will play on doing a few little details on little areas that honestly um, not particularly necessary, but I've got nothing else to do, so I might as well add them. <laughs> so if you have any questions, it would be a good a good um, time. But I think you can see that the subject's already coming um out on its own hopefully it'll be even better than this by the time i finished it but it's a very quick loose um feel and you said uh, at the start you said at the start that you were deliberately not adding a sky what what was the reason yeah. for that because i knew i wouldn't be able to get this um this wash on top of the sky, oh. basically the sky would have to be dry yes. before I I put those um those um domes in and and so because time is limited, uh, there's no point. There was no point. Um, I don't like hairdressers um for my paintings. <laughs> so hairdressers, hair dryers, hair dryers. Um, yeah. So. All right, so this ideally would be dry. It's not. So how much time do we have? Um, we've got 15 minutes. Oh, gosh, we've got loads of time. Yeah, you, right, you, you, you've okay. gone faster than you thought. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it always seems like, you know, oh, gosh, can't do a whole painting in, like, 10 minutes. It's like, yes, of course you can. Um, so, yeah, even me, I get myself um, caught up in things. Let's put something over here. I don't know what it is, but I want something that helps the eye. So this is vertical. This shape at the moment doesn't really talk well with this. I would like them, them to communicate a little bit better. So I'm actually going to bring something from this shape out. There is um, a stand or something. Um, it could I could do um, parasols. I could yeah, parasols could be a good idea as well. It's parasols that'll make it sunnier. There we go. Uh, one parasol at least. And I'll darken that there. Uh, Linda's yeah, asked. Put a cafe in. Linda's asked if you were to add a sky, what colours would you use for that? What would you what would you lean towards? 
I would have gone for something very neutral, I think. Something very um uh or something that's not gonna attract the eye very much. Yeah. Yeah, because um there's so much going on down here. You want something simple um here to not distract from what's going up going on at the top. This is one of my favorite brushes. It comes from the local hardware shop. Um, it's really, it's pig hair. It's really hard, but it's really nice. So I paint a lot with these. Yes, it's it's amazing how that there's this fine artist we host uh, in in Poland called Michael Yashevich, who's really his landscapes are amazing, but one of his principal brushes <laughs> is one of his kids' brushes, and they're just it's just got random hairs sticking out all over the place, but it it creates that randomness of nature, which uh, correct exactly loves. this exactly. Yeah, so he stole his child's paintbrush. Yes. He probably swapped and gave his his kid one of the good ones yeah. and yeah. took all the worn out, used out brushes. Yes, exactly. That wouldn't surprise me. Brilliant artist. Very nice person as well. Oh, he's lovely. He's lovely. Yeah. I, I actually hosted a show with him on the day that um russia invaded ukraine and um he his some um, of his grandparents uh lived in a town in ukraine and it was it was a highly emotional show let's put it that way yeah i can imagine yeah yeah but that's another reason why painting is so important huh? it, it actually um helps people on an emotional level yeah. not just um as a distraction but you can get rid of stress. You can get rid of all sorts of um, things um, through painting. And honestly, um, I think we're very lucky um, to have such an outlet. Um, and also it, it gives a, um, a source of communication. We have a way of um, communicating with people that we don't know with some sort of common ground. Um, and honestly, I think we're so lucky for that. It's not going to dry as much as I wanted it to, so I'm taking a plan B. Which is fine. I don't always have a lot of patience for this sort of thing anyway. Um, so I always have... You know, if it takes too long, then I'll 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 do things a different way. Um, and it, it is good to be able to have versatility when you paint, um, because if you're sitting there waiting for the paint to dry, quite literally, um, you kind of like I won't say prisoner to your painting, but your paper is dictating how and when you paint. Um, I find that a bit frustrating. So, you know. Creativity comes in all different shapes and sizes, and one of them is is um, ad adaptation. Makes you a very adaptable person in life as well. It's getting the the brain cells working in a way that we can adapt on all sorts of levels. Which is why I think we need to teach children a little bit more. Definitely. To paint. Definitely. Yeah. We we did a project. Yeah. Um, we were trying to do this project with this school in Africa to support them with some art materials, and it was. I interviewed some of the uh, parents down in in Kenya, and they uh, they were saying that they loved art, but their parents forced them to not do any art because it was a child's thing rather than an adult thing, and it was very restricted because they see that maths and and sciences are the, the things that can bring money into the family rather than art. But I think, like you, art, music, creative subjects are so important for the, the development of the brain. And actually, it does help you to be creative in life and make your way. Yeah. Yeah. And what's an entrepreneur? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's the problem solver. That's the initiative. That's the making on-the-spot decisions. The world would be better if we had more art because that's where um, 
we're able to play, we're able to um, uh, play on a playground, which is the sheet, to learn all of the qualities of life, but there's no risk. Here it's just mess up a piece of paper. That's all. That's the worst you can do. But you're learning to play, take risks, use your initiative, make decisions, um, analyze. I mean, for goodness sake, I think we should get rid of a lot of the other um, subjects at schools and, and put art as a major um, way of learning. You can learn maths through art. You can learn everything through art. Yeah. So anyway, I won't go too much further with it, but I, I think you get the, the gist of it. I want the atmosphere. So, again, I won't overwork it. Um, very, very quick, obviously. It needs a few details when it's dry, so maybe, John, I can finish it and give you those details in an image after. Yeah, please do. And, and, and actually, at the end of this video, once I've edited it, I'll I'll add some close-ups to, to the painting so that people can see close-ups of what they look like at the end. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the same thing. It's exactly the same principle. It's a completely different subject. It's um, And it still needs details, maybe a darker value here, all sorts of things. But I think the principle is the same. It's connecting all the shapes rather than focusing on the individual subjects in, a, in what will become your painting. Instead of focusing on one dome, a second dome, this is different. Then there's the people, then there's that, then there's this. You actually focus on the whole unity as a whole. And at the end is when you start separating and adding little details and things. And that's where you can add your windows, your, your little things with, um, you know, um, let's say a dryer brush to get more definition. But in the beginning, you're tying it all together. Now, Hazel's asked... Hazel's asked, would would you put anything on the right-hand side of the painting or leave it blank? And I, I guess mm -hmm. yes. your eye is being pulled to the focal point, isn't it? I, I don't think it needs anything necessarily. Yeah, I'd probably cut it about there. Yeah, that's how you'd mount it. Yeah, and that's why, I mean, it's this is such a, a revolution. No, it's not really. <laughs> how? Um, I do this with all of my paintings. I actually take... Um, kitchen paper so I can have it the length I want and I quite literally stick it around the edges because um, I can see my painting better and as I actually work vertically my, my easel is actually virtually um, vertical I can't put a mount board on it falls down um, so this is the way that I did and I, I, I decided to, to do myself and it's it's just you can see everything you can see so much better and often i finish my paintings with this on because i can see what i need rather than being distracted by all the empty paper on the edge of the the sheet so yeah anyway two paintings in one hour we're so ah. good <laughs> we're, we're spoiled so we're spoiled good. thank you so much <laughs> Oh, it's like eating chocolate all day long. It's a pleasure. <laughs> so there we go. And have you have you actually been to this square yourself and painted? Have you painted plein air in this square? I absolutely have. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. I was there just a few months ago. Yeah. No, it's a, it's a Venice is an amazing place because it doesn't matter where you go. There's a thousand subjects. Yeah, it's it's so um, and OK, it's cliche. OK, we've all seen a thousand paintings. But the reason why we've all seen a thousand paintings is because it's such an amazing place to paint. Yeah. Yeah. You weren't too annoyed by the pigeons then. No. And, and it's quite amazing because there's always loads of people and no one pays attention to you. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I've painted this scene in front of the building and absolutely everyone just walks past you because me painting next to this, I am so uninteresting compared to the building in front of me that people don't even notice that I'm there. So some people are like, you know, oh, gee, I just don't dare go and paint um, in the middle of, you know, loads of people, uh, particularly in front of a touristic scene because people are all going to swarm around you. And sometimes it's the opposite. 
the surroundings, they're all looking around like this. So they might quite likely bump into you because they don't see you, but they won't stop. Um, maybe they'll stop for a minute or two, but, you know, they've got so many other things to look at um, that you're not the most interesting thing, I'd say, in the room. So you need to take your courage into your hands and just go and draw and paint wherever you want. But try and aim for more than the subject, whether it be the atmosphere, whether it be um, just maybe concentrating on part of the subject rather than doing what I call a handmade photo, which is trying to get every single brick, every single pigeon, every single window cell. Because after you'll probably look at your painting and you'll say, oh, you know, I should have stopped earlier. Um, and that's how you sort of know when you need to stop. You put a little bit of kitchen paper or mat board or something around it, but don't finish it. Leave the painting um if you, if you think maybe 70% of the painting is finished, stop. Perhaps don't even put the details in. Then leave it, walk around, go and do something else. And when you come back, say the next day, not straight after, say the next day, you come back and you look at your painting, you'll probably add a few little strokes here and there and that's it. That 30% of the painting that you thought you needed to do would have been overworking the painting. So if you stop well before you get that big shape in, you don't need to put the details in, you don't need to, um, to put like all the things in, just stop, leave it. Really the next day is always good because then you've completely forgotten what you wanted. Come back and look at it and honestly, it's far from 30% that goes on the painting. For me personally, it's about 2%. So all the rest would have been too much. So there you go. Janine, thank you so much. That was absolute a, a real delight. And didn't the didn't the time go so quickly? Uh, if you're watching the video of this, wait until the end, and I'll show you some close ups of the uh, finished paintings as well. Uh, if you've got any words of thanks, if you're watching this live, please write that down on the Q and A for me now, and I'll read those through to Janine very soon. Um, and thank you, Janine, for your time today. It was it was really lovely. I, I can't believe how quickly the time went. And we covered we covered two amazing paintings. And this is a really good exercise for you. Do get your paints out. Do give it a go and follow along and try and follow along with the time that Janine has done it today, because it will be challenging for a lot of you. But I think you'll really be rewarded with and maybe need to do it a few times. But I think it. These skills of doing things quickly um, can be used in a lot of different ways. It helps you think quick. When you're doing something plein air as well, it's really good to be able to do things quickly. Um, so uh, thank you, Janine. It was, it, was, it was really lovely. My pleasure. Now, we've had a few comments. Uh, Jane said, so inspiring. Thank you. Victoria said, amazing, Janine. Fascinating technique. You made it look so easy. Sam said, wonderful. Uh, Dominique said, uh, I won't read the French. It's always a pleasure to see you paint, dear Janine, and thus to learn a little more, uh, was the translation. A uh, fantastic workshop, said Victoria. Thank you for the suggestion that we should get out of our comfort zones. Um, Pascal, merci, Janine. Magnifique. Uh, Diane said, uh, Merci beaucoup pour cette démonstration. Uh, Annie said, Merci beaucoup pour ce bon moment. Uh, Dominique, I said I wasn't going to do French, but there you go. I'm <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Thanks for this demonstration. Lenny, loved every minute. Thank you, Janine. Um, Hazel, wonderful. Thanks so much. Jean said, Thanks for starting my day here in Colorado mm -hmm. during a snowstorm. Oh, my goodness, Jean. Well, there you go. You can transport yourself to Venice. Um, uh, Lava, lovely, captured the scene so fast. Um, now, by the way, if you have done some paintings or you're, you're doing a painting on the recording, please do share with us. And the, the post relating to this class is on Facebook. So everybody hopefully has got an account there and you can just upload a photo of your painting. And I've kind of 
connected Janine to the post as well. So she should get notified when you do it. And we can just have a look at what people do. Everybody has a different interpretation of the same reference photo. So it's always really quite interesting to see. Um, if you want a direct link to the post, so if it's a few a few months on, it might have got slipped down the post. If you go to our website, Shopkeep RT, go to our video library, which is where uh, you'll find this, and click on class info. And the class info has the reference photos, but it also has a link to the Facebook post. So you can then go and find it and have a look at what people have done. So it's quite a good way of, of doing that. As I said, we will be launching this on YouTube in a few weeks time. We'll, we launch it first of all for our patrons so they can see it, but in a couple of weeks we'll launch it on YouTube. Um, and if you want to see when that's actually being launched and everything, it'll be on our events page on our website as well. And it has all the dates of all our upcoming things. Uh, Hazel said, is Janine doing a longer class soon? Well. We're going to have a conversation about it. We may do a workshop with Janine. Um, if you want to thank Janine for her time today, you can donate. Um, it's the price of a cup of coffee or a bottle of wine or something or other, and it's through the class info page. And if we get enough of those, we'll contact Janine and you get free entry to the longer workshop if if you've made a, a few donations and we'll, we'll set something up with Janine. So um, do have a look at that. Um, but have a word with Janine. I know a lot of you probably do classes. And if you like this format as well with, um, I, I, I don't know, it may, <laughs> you may enjoy it, uh, sharing the different screens, let Janine know and we'll maybe set something up, uh, a paid for workshop in the future. There you go. We've we've run over four minutes, but I think it was worth it. Thank Absolutely. you so much. Thank you so much for your time today. Um, that was really lovely, Janine. And as I, our first time of hosting you, you get a big round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank that you. Was so awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye, everyone.